Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is about me making a corset for myself. This will be my first corset making for myself. I made one in college for uh, a theater thing, but I haven't ever made one for me. So this is an exciting process and I just want to show you how the process went in case you're interested in making a corset for yourself or just interested in corsetry. So the reason that I want to make a corset for myself is I have recognized that I live with a moderate amount of back pain all day. <laughs> and I believe this is caused by two reasons. None of this is, uh, you know, claimed by a doctor or anything. So if, if I'm wrong, it's, don't yell at me. Uh, cause I'm not a doctor. I'm a costumer. <laughs> Um, I think the first reason that I experience back pain is that I have terrible posture. I tend to, especially when I am sewing, turn into a uh, sewing gremlin. And so you get that nice hunched back and that's a bad time. And I regularly have to like sit up nice and straight and be like, okay, posture. Uh, the second reason I would probably say is I sleep on my stomach and that's very bad for your lower back. Um, but it's a habit that I can't break. I always slept on my back uh, growing up because I had a dance teacher who told me that if you uh, sleep on your stomach if, and you prop one leg up each night, then your turnout will improve. And it did. She wasn't wrong. Um, <laughs> so I sleep on my stomach is the second reason. And the third reason is from like between the shoulders from base of neck to like essentially the base of my rib cage and to my bra band i have a very heavy chest uh i wear a 36 double d ish i probably could wear a triple d and it would probably be more comfortable um i yeah so and that's a lot of weight to carry around <laughs> every day and like the times when I have just like st sat with like holding my own chest up from beneath and just like held myself, it releases all of the pain on my back. And I so all of the, this to say, I believe that corsetry and wearing a corset daily would help me be able to live a little bit more pain-free because it would certainly help with my posture because historically that's something that corsets are known to do um, but also it does a better job of chest support rather than a modern bra because modern bras take all of the support that's supposed to happen from underneath and puts it into like a two to three inch band around your body whereas corsets take like 13, 14 inches to do it. Um, well, if we're talking under, under bust, it's probably like 10, nine or 10 inches. And so it just, it distributes the weight and pressure of your chest more evenly around your body. Um, also the bonus, I guess it, I don't know if it's a bonus, but it's an added factor is that you get a smaller waist which is exciting, um, not necessary. Everybody is beautiful, but it's exciting to have a smaller waist. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I bought my, the journey of my corseting, uh, started on Etsy. I was looking for a, well, not started on Etsy. I took my theatrical knowledge and my fashion history knowledge and considered what era of corset pattern I would like to start with. I didn't think that I was going to end up with a historical, a truly historical corset, uh, but seeing as corseting and st corsetry and stays have been built for hundreds of years, clearly the people of the past knew what they were doing and I wanted to just find a historical pattern as a jumping off point to get me to a modern silhouette that I was interested in. So I looked 
uh, I first considered buying a pre-made corset um, and those are very expensive when made well, <laughs> which of course is something that I was interested in. Uh, and by expensive I mean in the realm of $300 to $500-ish. And that's a lot of money. <laughs> so instead I, well, and the me buying a course, it was to see if I was going to be interested in wearing a corset around every day, um, rather than investing all of the money into making a mock-up and maybe finding that it wasn't going to be a good, I good idea. I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll just buy a corset instead. And that was expensive. So I was like, okay, no, I have to make a mock-up at least. And so I turned then to Etsy to find a historical pattern because I know of historical costumers here on YouTube that uh, have excellent patterns on their Etsy pages. So I was, I just figured I would support them and purchase uh, one of those patterns. And the one that I ended up getting is from a seller called Red Threaded and I got the 1860s Gord corset in a size 18, which I believe is the first plus size. I will put a text box here if that is incorrect. I will put a link in the description to where you can purchase this course. She also has many more patterns um, that are available for lots of different periods, which is awesome, and I can't wait to use another pattern in the future. Um, but I chose the 1860s corset because as you can see, it's got at the top, it's got uh, gores for the bust to sit in, where a lot of course, because I have such an ample chest, I was concerned about having room for my chest to exist. Um, and I didn't want it to just be like shove them up and then have a chest shelf. That wasn't something that appealed to me. So I, I thought that the gourd uh, corset would help. And then it also has um, hip gores here, which just fit over the hip nicely, and I thought that would be a, a nice look as well. So I purchased the pattern, and it, it's a downloadable pattern, so you print it out and puzzle piece all of the pieces together, and then cut it out and uh, sew uh, as instructed. And I find, I, as a ex very experienced sewer, I've been sewing for 17 years, I found the pattern very easy to follow, um, but it is definitely an advanced project, so I would not uh, recommend a corsetry if this is your first foray into sewing, because it's hard. <laughs> don't, don't get anything I, like, it's easy once you get into it and know what you're doing, but that's the same with any skill. Um, so, yeah, and I cut out the course, I, I cut out the corset just as it was without making any alterations, just because I wanted to see what it was like. The th materials that I used, this is my first mock-up. I got an unbleached cotton drill, which is one of the materials that uh, Red Threaded recommends. Uh, the other option is Coutil, which is spelled C-O-U-T-I-L. Uh, it is an extremely uh, taut fabric, which is ideal for corsetry because as you're putting a lot of pressure around the fabric going around the body, it's important that it has it's very strong, uh, which Coutil is. Uh, Coutil is very expensive though, which is why I did not make my mock-up out of it. And I got the drill because it was at Joann's and I, it was cheap. And I just wanted to see how it was. And after my first mock-up, I honestly might make my full corset out of drill. Uh, one, because I have it, and two, uh, it, it was very comfortable. I do want to wear, once I get the second mock-up, I want to wear the second mock-up around. Um, so, yeah. Um, so the material is cotton drill. I pulled ribbon. Clearly, I have two colors of ribbon uh, for lacing. Uh, I would do want to buy... This is not how I will be lacing it. Uh, when, the, when I have my actual corset, I will be doing fan lacing, which we'll get into later. Um, I also, for this mock-up, I did not purchase a busk. 
which is uh, a series of metal posts. It's uh, metal posts and metal loops that are uh, fused to metal bones that go on the front of the corset. So it's essentially like a series of uh, hook and like it's the little metal loops that hook around a, a post. Uh, which makes getting the corset on much easier than it currently is because I have to put this on over my head. But I didn't want to spend the money because busks are, they come in set lengths and you can't change the length. And so I didn't want to, per no, to spend $15 on a busk to have it be the wrong length, uh, which I'm glad I did. And it's fine. <laughs> like for a mock-up, I don't care. Uh, so yeah, that's the lacing, and then inside we can see I've got the waist tape. I purchased um, a polyester grow grain at Joann's that is tan because I don't care about the color. Um, I also, for my bone casings, instead of buying proper bone tape, I bought twill tape um, in a natural color because it's what Joann's had eight yards of. <laughs> and that yeah i will use real bone casing for uh my real corset um and in the again in the realm of saving money my bones are not actually bones they are not they are not baleen they are not whale bone they are also not steel uh bones which is what a lot of traditional corsets are made of they uh which is their steel bones are great they're just expensive again uh and i didn't want to have to pay for a bunch of materials that i didn't know if i was going to be able to reuse so what i went and got was zip ties so this is a trick that i learned in college uh that we used either for they're all of the corsets or just the rehearsal mock-ups but we uh we bought i think these are like three eighths of an inch wide extra heavy duty uh 24 inch long zip ties and they're plastic but you can cut them easily and they a pack of 15 of them costs like six bucks <laughs> which you can get a course it's worth of bones out of a package so it is more economical um and i hate using plastic but it's the easiest, cheapest way to make a corset. Uh, and also I will be able to reuse the, I know I'll be able to reuse these bones because I will have, I can put them in uh, Renfest bodices or I can use them when I make mock-ups for friends corsets, etc. cetera. Uh, and then in terms of grommets, I have quarter inch grommets here, the metal uh, pieces, and those are two part grommets. I got a kit at Joann's that had 72 of them, and it had plastic washers that go inside as one of the layers for additional strength and support, um, which I did to one, one grommet, one singular grommet, this one. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Right in there, there's a tiny little plastic washer. Who knows if you were able to see that, but just trust me. Uh, and in my experience of setting grommets, I feel less confident in how this grommet was set than the rest of them. Um, also, I had to set my grommets by hand because I don't have a grommet press as much as I would like one, but they cost like $300. So. Yes, I believe that's all the materials I used. Also, you can see I stitched it in uh, black thread and also red and some green. And that is just because I picked the colors that were at hand by my machine because it's a mock-up. And so I don't want the threads to match because I want to be able to see them in case I need to rip them out. <laughs> um, also, you can see I did not bind either of the edges. So the uh, raw edges are still exposed. Uh, a thing that I will be doing for the second mock-up is binding. I do want to bind the top edge and put a drawstring through, which is something that Period Corsets does, the company Period Corsets, uh, based out of Seattle, and I will link them below because they're beautiful. 
um, they put a little casing at the top of their corsets and then have a tiny drawstring that just helps uh, the corset lay flush with your skin. Um, and it helps smooth out any bumps, which I find very appealing. So, also you'll see in the fitting video that I was wearing a camisole underneath a basic camisole. I do have plans to eventually make some more period inspired uh, undergarments. I don't know how far I'm gonna go with it. I also don't know quite what they look like because I'm trying to figure out you know, wearing a corset and also needing to be warm in the winter and wearing tights and how urinating is gonna work and like contemplating split drawers and it's just a whole thing. Um, so yeah. And now we will cut to me having my first fitting. All right, so we can see I've got the corset on. First thing that I notice is that the wear the bust gore hits is very low uh, below where I want it to be because I want it to I want the corset to help support my chest and right now it's below doing that. It's a beautiful period silhouette for the 1860s but not for what I'm going for of having a modern corset so I'll have to raise that. In addition the side is very low and I think I'm gonna raise that as well. I'll look at uh, moving these bones here a little more forward to see if that will help move my chest into where I want it to be. In addition, I'm gonna sit down. For sitting, I think I'm going to also lengthen the hip gore just a tiny bit. Uh, just because I think that that will be good. So I'm going to also, now that I have this on, I will drive home in the corset just to see how it feels driving to make sure that this whole venture is indeed still a good plan. Um, yeah, and then I'll check back in when I'm, I've driven home. So, whoops, I lied. I didn't vlog after I drove home. I did wear the corset home in the car. Uh, it was wonderful to have nice posture, and I was sitting for about an hour. Um, so that, and it felt fine the whole time. I did notice I had a little bit of digging in my lower back, which once I recognized that it was the knot holding the lacing together at the bottom, uh, and not a bone, then I was totally fine. Um, also, I had laced it, so my natural waist is 38. I had laced down to, I think, 34. Uh, so it was four inches of reduction, uh, and that was perfectly comfortable. And uh, I was drinking water, and I had a little bit of snacking on the way home, and that felt fine. Um, I, I have not yet as of today, it is November 18th. I haven't uh, eaten a full meal wearing the corset and like felt how digestion happens. Um, but yeah, so the alterations that I made that I mentioned in my fitting video, I will give you specific amounts for. Um, I chose to add vertical space uh, to make it longer this way, starting from the bottom of the bust gores to uh, move them up about an inch and a half so that it would actually sit under my chest and give me support because I had noticed when you wear a corset you need to like scoop your chest into the garment so that it's like all of the tissue is sitting properly and it was my chest was just sitting very low down and the corset wasn't doing anything to support me and so I chose to move that up. Um, I also mentioned that I was raising the side. I chose to raise it three quarters of an inch uh, and the pattern alteration I did for that was, I hope that you'll be able to see this. You can see here I made a copy of my pattern 
on brown pattern paper and here is the inch and a half that I added and I added that all the way across and so but I only wanted to raise which in turn raised the side an inch and a half but I only wanted it to raise three quarters and so I just went back with a curved ruler and cut it down three quarters of an inch uh, so that the the net gain is three quarters of an inch if you will. Um, I also did move it was bones four and five. I moved them both bones forward five eighths of an inch, uh, which is also noted on this pattern, but you can't see where the original bones were. But those bones are now here. The lighting is bad and I'm sorry, but trust me, they moved forward uh, five, eighths, five eighths of an inch. At the bottom, the bottom point is still the same. I didn't feel like moving them there. And they might move back, we'll find out. Um, I also correspondingly raised the back side seam the three quarters of an inch because I wanted to raise it between bones four and five and eleven and twelve was where I felt it was short. So I just and I tapered to zero at the at those bone points. So I raised it the three quarters on the hip gore that I mentioned lengthening. I lengthened it a total of three quarters of an inch at the side seam and tapering and the side seam being the side seam on my body not the side seam on the corset because the side seam on the corset is a little uh it's around the back a little bit um so at the side seam on my body was three quarters and i tapered that to zero at the front and the back because i felt the where it hit me at the base of my uh belly and at the nape of my back was perfect and the length in the back was perfect as well didn't adjust that at all um i did originally consider repositioning bones 11 and 12 which are these diagonal bones here i had thought about moving them to be oh what did i think about moving them i thought about moving them to angle closer into the waist. I don't know if you can see on my mock-up that I have some pencil lines drawn here. But I and I chose to not do that because that was more aesthetics than support. And I don't think that that will be an issue. And of course, if I find that I want to move them later, I can. So yeah, that's what I have going into the second mock-up. And I'm very excited. I'm going to probably start working on it today after I'm done with work. All right, so I have the corset on and we can see uh, of the improvements I made of lengthening the waist and raising the side, lengthening the hip gores just a little bit uh, and moving these bones forward. Um, that so far I'm very pleased with uh, how everything is fitting. I'll give you a little side view and also a back view. Um, and things that I still am not super pleased with, I'm definitely more uh, more pleased with how my chest is sitting. It feels actually supported, but also it still could be a little higher. Um, so I will be making a third mock-up and exploring that. Um, also, you'll see that on this second mock-up, I bound the top edge with a little bias tape uh, and threaded a ribbon through so that I could so that I could cinch the top closer to my body. Because you can see, without that cinching, there's a definite, definite uh, extra uh, amount of extra fabric, and you can just solve that real quick with. A little drawstring and then that just cinches it nice and close here to the body um, but one thing that I will say is even if if this is the final silhouette or if whatever I find in the third mock-up after I raise this even a little higher if that's the final silhouette um, we can see that I will need to take in and alter these bust gores a little bit because they're now too big. Um, I definitely like how big they are to about here, but then they need to come back in. 
so they won't be so triangle shaped they'll be more I don't know there'll be a triangle and then it will taper back in at the top uh, but yeah now I'm gonna spend a couple hours in this to just see how it feels um, just to have it on around the house all right so I have been wearing my second mock-up of my corset for mm, a couple hours now probably three or four and I'd say it's very comfortable I've been very happy uh, with how I've been feeling uh, in those couple hours I ate an orange and a granola bar drank some water and I was sitting and um, editing another video so I was uh, sitting pretty comfortably uh, I, when I was standing I was comfortable um, also, I will stand up and show you my whole outfit. I have a dress on uh, that has a very nice full skirt because I wanted to mimic what I would be wearing once I get into making more of my own clothes, which will be very much similar to this silhouette. Also underneath this, I have um, a gray little tank top on. It's a pajama shirt. Uh, acting as a corset cover. I'm also wearing my athletic shorts that I wear under uh, summer dresses like this uh, to prevent chub rub because I would, that is what I would wear under this. However, I will be making um, bloomers later. That's an eventual thing. But I just wanted to see of all of the layers that I'm wearing how comfortable it was. And I feel very comfortable. Yeah, and I definitely, I think I'll wear it to school next week sometime, uh, just to see what it feels like to work a day in a corset. Um, just to see what it feels like. We're definitely, I'm getting closer to getting to make the real thing, which is really exciting. Alright, so I just got home from work, and I chose today uh, to wear the corset to work for a whole day and I loved it. It was very comfortable. I was doing an even mix of sitting and standing and doing the physical labor parts of my job in the costume shop, and I felt totally comfortable to be wearing the corset the whole time. Uh, the drive was also fine both to and from, and I ate. I ate breakfast and lunch while wearing it, and it felt fine. Um, I will say I have some alterations still that I need to make. I know, I think in the f second fitting, I mentioned that I wanted to raise the bust even more. I don't think that's the case anymore because how this is looking, uh, the, this being my silhouette, how, I, how my silhouette looks and how my shape looks is lovely. Um, and I don't have the level of back pain that I normally do at the end of a work day that's caused by my bra. So I think the fact that like I don't have the most chest support is not the end of the world because at, at the end of the day like it, the corset forces me to have excellent posture which really I think it like just makes my shoulders do their job <laughs> better. And so that helps and solves all of the problems. Um, I will say though, I'm gonna, I'll take off my sweater here and I'll show uh, the new alterations that I have come up with. All right, surprise. I uh, decided to come into my bathroom to show you this because it's easier to do it in the mirror. So, and I drew on the corset and I hope you're gonna be able to see this, but I can talk through it and while I'm making the alterations, I can show you what I mean. So I want to lower the center front uh, where the busk will be, uh, just about a quarter of an inch. This line will be where the bones start, because right now the bones end a quarter inch above where this line is, and I just want it a little bit lower, because I noticed uh, when I was wearing my sweater, and also when I was wearing uh, my blue dress the other day, that... Uh, it t just creates a bit of a straight shelf line here, which is fine, but it's not the most appealing to me. So this bone gets shortened, these bones will be shortened, and this bone will also get shortened, and it will taper, taper to zero 
at the first bust gore. The next thing is, I believe in the second fitting I talked about that the fact that altering the bust gores, I was going to need to taper them in, and I figured out what that amount is, because right now the top uh, I think is about two and three eighths inches when it's fully flat, and I need it to be, I need them both to be two inches across. Uh, and I have drawn here, I don't know if you can see it, but I have drawn uh, points of where it's, where it doesn't need to taper, and then I will uh, see that, I'll do the tapering from that point up. Um, in addition, a thing that I've noticed, so I have, a, there's, this is bone eight, uh, is this bone that goes right down my side seam, right here at the base of the bone has been digging into my waist all day, which is not comfortable, <laughs> but I think if I carry it down into the hip gore like bones six and seven and nine and ten are, um, and just carry it down so it'll just be a single bone going down my side seam. I think that will be more comfortable. Um, the other ones that, the other bones that don't interact with the uh, hip gore are fine. Those being four and five are totally fine. I don't feel them poking me at all. Um, I also do still, I was thinking in the first mock-up, I was like, oh, maybe I'll move bones 11 and 12 to be more angled towards the waist, and I think I am going to do that, um, because we can see right here how the end of this is, like, poking out, and I don't love that, and I think it would actually help the back to have a, that longer point of support. Um, to be coming from the waist. Um, also, the nice thing that we can see now is that I've been wearing it for a whole day, and so the corset has started to mold to my shape, which is really exciting. So, like, it, the belly is, the, the bones have decided to go over my belly, but like, it's just molding to all of my curves really nicely, and that's really comfortable. I also do think that I will make my final version out of the cotton drill because uh, this has been perfectly comfortable, and I have it, and that way I don't have to pay for it. But I will be putting a fashion layer on top just to make it pretty and more durable. Also, another alteration that I'll talk about via specific amounts uh, when I'm altering it, I will be adding extra seam allowance to a couple of the seams uh, to be able to flat fell them which I will explain uh, what flat filling is when I'm talking, when I'm doing those alterations. Um, but I just need a little bit more seam allowance to be able to accomplish those. So yeah, I think that's all I got. I'm, a, I'm definitely glad that I wore this for a full day at work because it allowed me to make decisions based on how it feels uh, more fully. So yeah. So I didn't end up recording myself making the alterations to the pattern because I just got too excited and did it without all of you, and I'm very sorry. Uh, but I will tell you all of the alterations that I made, reiterating what I said in the previous clip, uh, and also um, just talking about the amounts that it got added to everything. So we'll start with the front pieces. So we can see here that this edge has been shortened for uh, the bones coming down a quarter of an inch. The bones being the busk and bone one are the ones that came down and they tapered to zero at the bust gore point, the first bust gore. Um, the next thing that happened on the fronts, I altered the amount of seam allowance on the side seam for flat felling, which if you don't know what flat felling is, it is a uh, seam technique used most notably that everyone can recognize on the inside seam, on the inseam of jeans, uh, because it is a very durable seam. And since uh, jeans were originally 
uh, designed and marketed towards uh, coal miners and also cowboys. When you're a cowboy, that seam gets a lot of wear and tear. And so that is why jeans have a flat felt seam. And the way a flat felt seam is accomplished is, I'm going to talk about this in known um, sewing vocabulary, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, I'm going to explain it this way. <laughs> so you're going to sew the garment wrong sides together, wrong side being the part of the fabric that, the side of the fabric that touches your body, the right side being the outside of the garment or the pretty side of the fabric. So you sew them wrong sides together first, and then um, you trim half the seam allowance of, when well, you trim one of the seam allowances down to an eighth of an inch, and then the other one, the other seam allowance that didn't get trimmed, folds around and gets stitched on top. Uh, and if you go and look at a pair of jeans, you will see that that is how it is done. And it just that puts the seam allowance and all of the bulk on the outside of the garment, which makes that seam more durable. And also it makes it more comfortable to not have your seam allowance on the inside. And when you're wearing a very tight fitting garment, like a corset, that is very helpful to have all of your seam allowance on the outside for your own comfort. So I added seam allowance to the seams that are getting flat felled. That being the side seam, which is just past bone eight. Um, the hip gore seam will also get flat felled where the lacing strip joins the rest of the corset, that will be flat felled. And I did a sample of flat felling the bust gore, uh, which we can see here. So this would be the outside and you can see how there's this ridge and that's where the seam allowance is folded around. Um, and it's, you can see the stitching, you can see two lines of stitching which are the original seam that got done and then the top stitching to keep that seam allowance in place. This is what the inside looks like. So you can see the wrong side of the fabric is, uh, you can only, like you can see the ridge where that first seam happened and then the second line of stitching um, that coordinates with the red on this side. Um, and I wanted to flat fell it. I wanted to do a sample to just see if I could get the bust gore to flat fell. And I can. I don't know if I will end up doing it just because this is like it does this little uh, square bit at the bottom, which I don't love the look of. Um, and that's really <laughs> the only thing that's holding me back. It's not functionality at all. I think it will actually function better if it's flat filled, but I will get into that uh, when I'm making my actual corset, if I decide to flat fill it or not. But regardless, things that have been done on the front are I uh, trimmed that top edge and added seam allowance for flat filling. This hip gore, so I added seam allowance here because this is the seam allowance that wraps around. If there are spots that are flat felled that don't, that are the part that gets trimmed down, I didn't add seam allowance because there's no point in adding if I don't need to because it's just getting trimmed away. Um, which is why the bust or the hip gore line still is only 3 8 inch, which this pattern comes with 3 8 inch seam allowance included in on the side seams and hip gore and then the back uh, seam with the lacing strip is 5 eighths. Uh, and then your top line is a quarter of an inch. Um, so yeah, I altered the ones that needed it. Now to the back, I did the same thing. So we can see the side seam has 3 eighths. The back, the back was at 5 eighths and I trimmed it down to half an inch because it will get flat felled and this is the one that gets trimmed but I just made it a half an inch 
for consistency of working so that I know some seams are 3 8 some are half an inch. And I did end up moving bones 11 and 12 to be more angled to the waist. They used to sit, the bottom of bone 12 used to be up here and now it is down here. So that is what got done to that. The bust gore now looks like this. It is, I transferred it to brown pattern paper because I needed to add seam allowance for flat felling and also I tapered that in uh, the amount that was necessary. So it started at two and the finished measurement of the bust gore was two and three eighths of an inch and I needed it to be two inches across. So what I did to alter it was I measured three sixteenths in from either side and trimmed that down to zero at the points that I marked that I talked about in the fitting. And those points uh, were, ended up being, one was at two and a half and one was at um, three. So I split the difference and made it two and three quarters as the zero point. And that's what got done to this. And the lacing strip, I trimmed the seam allowance down as well. And that is to do the flat felling and do it according to how I want it. Uh, I will say I originally had thought, oh, I want 5 eighths of an inch for flat felling. But that this sample that I did was done with the 5 eighths inch seam allowance. And I think it's pretty wide looking, so I'm going to end up I ended up taking it down to half an inch because the three eighths of an inch was not enough, uh, but the five eighths is too chunky. So I think the half an inch will be a perfect medium that will make me happy. Um, the other thing that I did that is not, it is for ease of stitching-ish, was on every piece that has a top, that is the top edge of the corset, or the lower edge of the corset, so that being the top and bottom edges of the lacing strip, the top edge of the bust gore, the top edge of the top of the corset, the top of the back piece, the bottom of the hip gore, uh, all of those pieces, and the right facing, uh, the top and bottom of the right facing. I added an additional quarter inch to each of those seams to make them half an inch. Now, that will get trimmed down to a quarter of an inch. But on working on both the first and the second mock-ups, I noticed that the fabric fray frays out pretty easily. And so I want to add additional seam allowance so that as I'm working, all of that fraying can happen and then I can just trim that away and have a nice clean edge for binding. Um, and that's the only reason I did that, <laughs> is just to get the finished product to be as pretty as possible. The other alteration that I made um, was to the bust or the hip gore. I mentioned that I was going to add the uh, to take bone eight and carry it down into the hip gore, which is this line here now. And I made that uh, perpendicular to the grain line of the pattern piece because I felt, I felt like that was appropriate. Um, and so that will sit on the side seam of my body and will keep that bone from digging into my waist. And I did make all of those alterations to the second mock-up. So this is technically now the third mock-up, even though physically I only had a second corset that I just altered. And what I did for the bus scores was I took little darts in the bust gore to take out that additional fabric that I didn't need there. And I did that in all four bust gores. I cut down the bones uh, that are the busk and bone one at the top. I cut them down the quarter of an inch um, and then trimmed the top edge down accordingly. And I jury rigged <laughs> a bone casing into for bone eight. Um, because the way it was built was kind of weird and also the bone that I ended up adding to do a mock-up fitting is about an inch and a half too short but I didn't want to cut a whole other bone 
I didn't want to cut a hole of their bone, is the end of that sentence. <laughs> um, so those are the things that I did, and I did feel very uh, pleased with all of those alterations and that they were completely appropriate. Uh, so that is the end of the mock-up process and now I will say this video because I've been working on editing it as I'm making it is very long and for the sake of everyone's sanity including my own I am going to call this part one uh, so we've seen me talk about why I want to course it and go through the mock-up process and the alterations that uh, are required to get me to where I am to be ready to make the final corset. And then the final corset will be its own video, which will also include more of laying out and cutting the pattern and talking about my fashion fabric, and I'll talk about all of the real materials that I'm using as opposed to the mock-up materials, um, which will be very uh, good and exciting. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you'll come back to watch the second one. Please like this video to let me know you enjoyed your time here, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video, and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all on the flip-flop!